and we'll be jumping into talking about the prepare step, task one, P1, which is management, uh, risk management roles. And our task here is to identify and assign individuals to specific roles associated with security and privacy risk management. So uh, the old the old rule applies here. If you don't assign someone responsibilities to do something, then it won't get done. So so we have to, we're going to take a lot of the, well, we're going to take each and every task in the RMF, and we're going to assign primary responsibilities and supporting roles. Um, so really at this point, before we even start, we need to know who in the organization is responsible for security and privacy, who has those either primary tasks or uh, secondary ass assignments. So who is who are the people that, that we're going to task with uh, managing and maintaining the security and the privacy of our organization. We have to get this all down in writing. So, you know, you know, we think about things like the chief security officer or the chief information security officer or the uh, information system security officer, the ISO. These roles all need to be documented. They need to be put down in writing that, that Joe Smith is assigned as an ISO. Um, we need to get this all in writing. And this is where we go through and we go through the organization. We figure out who those people are and we get them all assigned, right? So as you can imagine that the, well, let me back up a little bit. Um, if you have not worked with RMF 2.0, uh, RMF 1 as well, there's, there's a few changes, but um, it, with the RMF, there's always going to be in every single task, there's going to be someone that, a person or a, a set of people that have primary responsibility for something, they're assigned this task. And then there's going to be supporting roles, roles that support getting the task done. So as you can expect, this is a organizational level task. So you're going to see organizational uh, titles in here. So we have head of the agency. So if it's a military or if it's a, if it's a government agency, you can have someone like the, the director, the head of the agency. Um, if it's a civilian organization, this may be the CEO. Uh, whoever's the top of that organizational chart, when we look at the, the top of the pyramid, the very top person, um, they're responsible for this thing. That's their responsibility. Uh, the chief information officer is also responsible for this. And the senior agency official for privacy um, is responsible for this, right? Uh, so we have high level people are going to be responsible. Are they going to be doing this? Probably not. They're probably going to delegate this. Um, and that's where we see a lot of the supporting roles. Supporting roles a lot of times are the folks that uh, get tasked to do this. But that responsibility, the responsibility for this thing getting done, uh, head of the agency, the CIO, and the senior agency official for privacy um, are responsible for this. But it, its supporting roles are the authorizing official or the authorizing official's designated representative. And if you haven't heard of that role, the AODR, um, is another role that gets tasked with a lot of things. So the authorizing official, authorizing official is also a fairly high level position. So a lot of times the things assigned to the AO um, actually get moved to the AODR because the AODR kind of works for the AO. Um, in most cases, they work directly for the AO. Um, the senior accountable official for risk management or the risk executive function. So. In RMF 1, we talked a lot about the risk executive function, and I'll go on my soapbox on that when we actually talk about each of these roles individually, um, which is not today. Uh, there's a lot of roles. We'll, we'll take those on one at a time. Um, but now we have the senior accountable official for risk management. So that's the, the, the person that's in charge of risk or the risk of executive function, which could be a board or an individual. Um, and the senior agency information security officer. Um, that could be chief information security officer or chief security officer, depending on, on where you're at. And when we get into the task, we're going to see that these, these roles could have different names. So these are the names that NIST gives these roles. Your organization may have different names for these positions. So we'll have to document all that in this, set, this task as well. So how do we get started? Where do we start gathering our information when we start putting this thing together? Well, 
every task in RMF 2.0, this is new with 2.0, um, so that's 837 revision 2, uh, has potential inputs and expected outputs. So if we look at a, like a, a process flow, on one side we have a bunch of stuff coming in, and that's those potential inputs. We have the task itself, which is uh, assigning these roles and responsibilities, and then expected output, what we expect to get at the end of this, which is kind of nice. We, we know what our output should be before we start doing the task, right? So some of the things leading to, to getting this thing done are the uh, organizational security and privacy policies and procedures. We don't want our policies and procedures because we need, need to know what we're doing, right? Um, and we might even find out there's gaps in our policies and procedures as we go through this task because as we walk through each of the tasks, they align with the SDLC or the system or software development lifecycle. And maybe we realize, well, there's a policy that we're missing maybe on change management. Uh, we need to come up with that. Another good input, and this is probably what I would say is the primary input to getting started on this thing, is your organizational charts, those hierarchies, those, those flow charts of who reports to who. We want to have a good set of those so we can see, okay, who is, you know, the, the, the executive, the chief executive for our organization? Who's the head of the agency? Okay, we know who that is. We can assign that responsibility. What's their title? Do we, we need to make sure that we document their title is different than the NIST title. Um, and then expected outputs, uh, again, are going to be uh, documented risk management framework role assignments. And when we say assignments, we're going to expect, we're going to expect these things to be in writing. You are assigned as an ISO. And maybe even you're assigned for an ISO for a certain set of systems or for a certain part of the organization. But we're going to want to have some kind of paper that says, Every one of our ISOs is, is assigned as an ISO and probably defines their responsibilities in there. Um, here's the part I was kind of wondering about. How are we going to tackle this piece, right? So each of these tasks, as we go through them, they're going to have this, this kind of sometimes a, a huge discussion area, right? This one is not so bad. Um, so we could summarize this or we could kind of read it word for word. So this is, this is our first one. I'll kind of give you a, a taste of both of those, so, right? So this is what NIST says this, this task is all about. Uh, the roles and responsibilities of key participants in the risk management process are described in Appendix D. And Appendix D does, it, it, it lays out every single NIST role and a definition of that role. So it's good to look in Appendix D. Um, there's also some tables that define each of the tasks who is primarily responsible and who's supporting. So that's a good document to look at as well. Um, the roles and responsibilities may include personnel that are internal or external to the organization as appropriate. So not everybody needs to be uh, a full-time employee or, or a person assigned to that organization. So when we're defining these roles and responsibilities, we're going to want to define, hey, this position uh, let's say, oh, we'll stay with the same one, uh, the head of the agency or the chief uh, executive officer has to be an employee of the company or an uh, organizationally assigned person, right? It can't be a contractor. It can't be a ter term or a temp employee, which only makes sense for that role. You're not going to have a CEO that's a term or a temp. Uh, you're not going to have a head of the agency that's a term or a temp, right? Um, and so we're going to have to say, you know, this this in the in the government they do that. This role is government in nature. It has to be a government employee. Uh, we're going to want to say the same thing. If we're in a civilian organization, this role has to be occupied by a full time employee, right? So we want to define those things that that uh, those roles I should say that are required to be uh, an organizational person and those roles that can be uh, a temp or a contract or a term, something like that. Uh, since organizations have different missions, functions, and organizational structures, there may be different naming conventions for risk management roles and uh, how specific responsibilities are allocated among organizational per personnel, e.g. Uh, multiple individuals single, filling a single role or one individual filling multiple roles. Right? So what we're saying here is, you know, uh, your name may vary, right? you're not going to have a head of an agency generally in a civilian organization, in a, in a private organization. You're going to have a chief executive officer. So the name may change. Um, you may have 
several people filling a role, like an ISO role, is probably going to be filled by several people. Uh, your risk executive function, uh, again, by definition, can be a single person or it can be a board of people. So risk executive function may be filled by multiple people. Conversely, you can have um, a single person filling multiple roles, right? Um, in either situation, the basic risk, ma risk management functions remain the same. Um, so we want to make sure that when we change the name or when we assign multiple people to a role or multiple roles to a person, uh, the functions re remain the same, right? And here's the important part. Organizations ensure that there are no conflicts of interest when assigning the same individual to multiple risk management roles. For example, authorizing officials cannot occupy the role of system owner or common control provider for the systems or common controls they are authorizing. Right, so we want to make sure there's no conflicts of interest, right? So if I was the authorizing official and I was also the system owner, I could authorize my own system and accept the risk of not implementing a lot of controls, right? So it makes, it doesn't make sense to have a person occupy roles that would be conflicting, right? So if I'm working on the information system side of the house, maybe I'm the ISO or the system owner or the common control owner, I really can't be on the authorizing side. I can't really be on the authorizing official designated representative or the risk executive function or the AO side. We want to make sure there's no conflicts of interest. So we have to go through that and make sure that there is no conflicts of interest in the way we're assigning these roles and responsibilities, right? Uh, in addition, combining multiple roles for security and privacy requires care because the two disciplines may require different expertise, um, and in some circumstances, the priorities may be comp uh, competing. Some roles may be allocated to a group or an office rather than an individual. For example, control, assessor, risk, executive function, or system administrator. Those may not be a person. They may be a group of people, like the system administrators may be taking care of a group of systems, or there may be a group of administrators taking care of the system that you're working on. So in any case, we want to make sure uh, that at the end of this task, we have went through all of, we got to look at all the tasks coming ahead, um, and we got to make sure that we have individuals assigned to those roles that are defined in Appendix D. And again, the big thing is your name of that role, the, the title may be different. And that's okay. Have a different title. It's not a big deal. Um, but the, the task needs to be the same. So maybe you don't have security control assessors. That's fine. You maybe have, maybe you have control assessors. Maybe you have security testers. Maybe you have a blue team, blue test team whatever you call it, you can call it red armadillo. It doesn't matter. The big thing is when we look at the definition of a security control assessor in Appendix D, you need to have somebody that's doing essentially those tasks. So uh, we need to make sure that that's happening. Uh, I guess, I guess that's, that's, that's kind of it. We want to make sure when we're, we get to the end of this thing, we want to make sure that, that we have those those defined, right? And, and there should be somebody putting in writing all of these tasks, right? So references for this one are uh, Special Publication 800-160 Version 1, Special Publication 181, and the NEST Cybersecurity Framework, or CSF. Um, again, I'd, I'd like to hear your questions and comments, of course, down below. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a little bit of a cough still. Let me know what is the best way we can go about this. Does it make sense to, to read those big blocks of text like that? Is it good to break them out like I did today? Or should I just summarize them and, and roll with it? Because some of them are going to get fairly big. As we go along, some will be fairly big pieces of text. I kind of, personally, I kind of like doing it the way we did it this morning. That way we kind of went through it and then talked about kind of that section we were, were covering. Um, that way when you look back at the document later. Maybe you have some some supporting um, dialogue to go with it. I don't know what to, what to say, but let me know. Throw some comments in the below. In, the, in throw some comments in the comment section, of course. Um, as always, I, I'd appreciate if you uh, like the channel, hit the bell to be notified, like this video, uh, subscribe. Of course, get your friends to subscribe if they're interested in security or risk management. We're going to keep 
keep pushing the stuff out. Um, 